G'day guys, welcome. There was one piece of footage that the club released last week and they did release a highlights package of the intra-club practice game. Got to, you know, got to put it into context and um, to be perfectly honest, I didn't take a hell of a lot out of that. Um, would have actually been nice to be there. But um, there was one bit of play that, that I suppose caught my attention and, and got me thinking, got me thinking. Um, and that was the piece of play where Jack Silvani uh, sort of swooped on a ball across the wing. And it looked like he, like, just from that one passage of play, it looked like he was sort of possibly playing behind the ball. Um, and we know traditionally Jack has sort of pushed up to the ball as a, as a, as a forward. But this one looked like he was behind the ball. Um, and I'll be interested to know where he was actually playing. But uh, it got me thinking about Jack um, over the weekend and... and um, I suppose where he sits, and, and there's no doubt I'll put it on the table right here, right now, that I that I have underestimated him, um, and I still don't think he is there yet. Um, I think there's there's a f fair bit to play out with Jack still. Um, I think he's just becoming more and more comfortable. You can just see it in him, and I think there was this train of thought that he had a, a super, super breakout season in 2021, but if you look at his numbers um, from 2019, where he played the 17 games, his numbers are actually a little bit better in 2019 than they were this year, uh, or sorry, last year, um, considering 220 was a complete write-off. Uh, but there was something about his performances last year which really stood out. Um, and I was actually really surprised that he only finished 10th in the best and fairest and the likes of Eddie Betts and, and Lockie Plowman finished in front of him. I thought he was, yeah, I thought that was, he was pretty stiff in that regards. But really, I think it's more than just Jack as the individual, but more as Jack as how vital he is for our team. And I think he's really becoming, you know, he's really becoming one of our, one of our most important players because of his versatility. And, I, and I'll put it right here, right now. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw him line up in a, in, a, in a completely foreign position that we never thought Jack would play. Um, you know, I think we, I think he'll play forward. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's playing across half back or playing in a back pocket or if he, if he was on the ball or let's centre bounces. It just wouldn't surprise us. He has that flexibility. Um, so was it a breakout season? I think it was because I thought he was – Huge. I thought he was a big game, a big game player in our wins, um, and we didn't have many of them. We didn't have many of them. But Jack really stood up and was a real significant player in. I thought our best wins: the Collingwood win, uh, the St Kilda win late in the season, where he had career best numbers, twenty five touches, proved that he can win the ball, five marks and nine tackles. That's a big, big game. Um, the nineteen. Possessions and nine marks against Frio and two goals was was exceptional as well, um, and but that just sort of think well he's a bit of a front runner he plays well when the when the team plays well, but no I mean it was only a week before a week or two before the St Kilda game where North Melbourne absolutely absolutely creamed us um, that Jack was our clearly our best player in that in that in that game against North Melbourne with twenty one touches and nine marks so I just think he's matured I just think he's really comfortable in his own skin now. Um, I mean, I could only imagine how difficult it's been for him. Um, I, mean, is it, 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 I mean, it's one thing being a Silvani and, and potentially getting a leg up because you are a Silvani, but then to actually have to come to the football club with a, with the spotlight of, of, of the footy world on you, um, particularly if your old man was, was one, of the, one of the greats of of the modern era, you know, and we're talking of the the full back in the team of the century. Um, and then, obviously, a grandfather and, and the Silvani name. But I honestly think Jack's now comfortable with that. I don't know him personally, um, but it must have been hard. But now he he's, he he's a player in his own right, and he's now got 78 games under his belt. He's 24 years of age. He's coming into his seventh season. Um and I think, I think he knows that he's never going to be his father and he doesn't have to be his father. But one thing I think Jack realises is the legacy, the legacy that he wants to leave as a Carlton person. Um, and that is success. That is success. The Silvani name is about success. Um, and unfortunately, Jack was drafted into a shit show. 
and it's continued to be a shit show right the way through. But now he's at that age where he he can he can start to he can start to drive change um, and 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 success. Uh, and at twenty four years of age, there's still plenty to play out for him. Um, and obviously, the ultimate will be will be a premiership. Um, so where does he play? I, I just thought you know like that that piece of footage. I mean that piece of footage. Um, got me thinking about, you know, obviously Jack, we think will be that hybrid sort of third forward, you know, that third marking forward. And I don't necessarily, he's great overhead and I don't necessarily think he's a great mark. And I don't necessarily think he's a, he's sort of a natural goal kicker either. He's a hard working forward and he's quite smart and he sets up goals. Um, so I wouldn't, be surprised. Well, what I'd like to see is, is Jack thrown around a fair bit, and I know you'd like to get players settled, but where is our weakness? Where is our real weakness? And I think there's weaknesses now across each line, uh, particularly with Walsh going down, and you think of Liam Jones retiring um, and the hole that leaves down back. And also, you know, in our front half as well, still question marks as well. Um, but I think Jack Martin might be that third tall or that that hybrid type forward. And we might go a little bit smaller up in our front half, particularly if Charlie's up and going. So a weakness, I think, is still on those wings. On those wings, I think we're growing depth in the centre square and through that midfield mix. Um, and one thing I have noticed about Jack, even over the last maybe three pre-seasons when we've been able to get to training, is Jack... Jack, since he first started, has really, really, really improved his running capacity. He's always, he's always up the front, not necessarily right up the front with the likes of Welsh and Cottrell and Co. But he's he's generally in the in the, in the top sort of quarter when the when the players are doing their running. So he he, he has built an engine. He has built an engine um, uh, over the last say three or four seasons. So I'm thinking Jack. I'm thinking I'd like to see Jack given an opportunity on one of those wings. I really would. Now, if Will Setterfield can play wing, I think Jack could be just as effective option as Will Setterfield. Definitely a more effective option than a Matthew Cottrell and definitely probably more effective option than, say, a Lockie O'Brien or a Jack Nunes. They're the, they're the options we've got at the moment. Um, and the thing about Jack is we know he's smart. We know he's smart and he's clever. Um, and he's shown that. Um, and he could play the similar type role as that defensive wingman as Angus Brayshaw played. And he's not overly quick, Angus Brayshaw, at Melbourne last year. And a similar role to what Camden McIntosh plays at Richmond, a similar defensive type wingman. He's courageous in the air and on the deck. We know he's bloody hard working uh, and he gives effort. He gives effort all the time and he's the ultimate team player. Um, and... That footage just shows how effective Jack is by foot when he goes inside forward 50. Admittedly, he gets the yips when he has to kick from the set shot in front of goals. But I think his delivery by foot is pretty bloody sound. Um, and that's been a real, real problem for us. So if you have, say, for example, a Lockie O'Brien on one wing who delivers it beautifully as well, and Jack on the other, I think it's a nice little combination that you've got going there. Um, and I think, I think Jack... The, the question mark for me is, and this has been down to the position he's been playing, is can he win enough of the ball? Um, and I think he can. He proved that this season, 25 touches, 21 touches, 22 touches, 19 touches, and this is predominantly playing, okay, as that sort of forward line player with a few stints in the ruck. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. I would love to see it trialled, and maybe they have been trialling it, Maybe they haven't. I'd love to know what you think. Am I barking up the wrong tree here with Jack? Is he purely just either a third tall key forward or a third defender or a pinch hit in the ruck? Or can we see him taking on a more significant role through the middle of the ground? And I'm talking about, I'm talking about a clear weakness at our football club, which is the wing. Let us know.